Today, we're going to learn how to add 3D sounds to game objects in Unity AR Foundation. Let's start. First, we're going to create a new project in Unity. I'm using version 2021.4. I'm going to name this project AR Lodash 3D Audio. And I'm going to hit Create. I'm going to install the packages needed for AR on Android and iOS using AR Foundation. Now, go to Window, select Package Manager. On the Package Manager top left, where it says Package in Project, select Unity Registry. Search part on the right, we're going to look for AR Foundation. I'm going to select AR Foundation 3.13 and I'm going to click Install. Next, I'm going to search for AR Core. And I'm going to select AR Core XR plugin, version 3.1.5, and I'm going to click Install. This plugin let us make use of the AR features on Android. Now, I'm going to search for AR Kit. I'm going to select AR Kit XR plugin, version 3.13. I'm going to click Install. And this package is the one that let us use the AR features on iOS. Set up the configurations on Android and iOS that will let us use AR on our mobile devices. File and select Build Settings. First. We're going to select the platform that we are using. If you're using iOS, select iOS. If you're using Android, select Android and click Switch Platform. Click on Player Settings and then on the Android tab, we're going to search for Vulkan under the Graphics API. We're not going to select it and then we're going to remove it by clicking on the minus button. We're going to uncheck Multi Threaded Rendering and then we're going to change the minimum API level to Android 7.0, API level 24. I'm going to change the company name. I'm just going to add Anton Lodash Developer. Now click on the iOS tab and search for Requires AR Kit and we're going to check that box. Make sure that the target minimum iOS version is 11.0. Select XR Plugin Management and then on the iOS tab check AR Kit. Select the Android tab and we're going to check AR Core. This is the basic configuration to run AR on mobile devices. I'm going to go to more hierarchy. I'm going to do the right click, select XR, and I'm going to click on AR session origin. I'm going to do the right click, XR, and I'm going to add an AR session. Select AR session origin. Now on the inspector, click add component. Search for AR plane manager. This object is going to allow us to detect planes on AR. Next, click add component. Search for AR raycast manager. And this component is going to allow us to raycast in AR. So in project, do a right click, create folder. I'm going to name this animation. And then it's going to be my scripts folder. Next, right click, create folder. I'm going to do prefabs. Right click, create folder. Shaders, right click, create folder. And this is going to be my texture folder. Next, I'm going to do right click, create folder. It's going to be my materials folder. And finally, I'm going to do right click, create folder and this is going to be my rest folder. Now we're going to import the different uh, resources that we need. First I'm going to select the AR Feather Plane Fade animation controller and I'm just going to drag and drop it into my animations folder. Next I'm going to select the Feather Plane Shader. I'm going to drag it into the shaders. Now I'm going to select my scripts and I'm going to drag and drop it into the scripts folder. Next I'm going to select the audio files and I'm going to drag and drop them into the rest folder. And finally, I'm going to select the plain pattern dot and I'm going to add it into the texture folder. Now I'm going to create an empty object and I'm going to name this AR Feather Plane Fade. This is the object that is going to appear once we detect planes. Click on Add Component and search for a Mesh Collider. Next, click Add Component. Look for a Mesh Filter. Click Add Component. We're going to add a Mesh Render. Click Add Component. And we're going to add an AR Plane script. Next, we're going to click Add Component, add an Animator. Click Add Component and search for AR Feather Mesh Plane Visualizer. And finally, click Add Component and search for fade plane on boundary change. Select the animations folder, then on the hierarchy select AR feather plane fade game object and on the inspector 
search for the animator controller and drag and drop our AR Feather Plane Fade Animator Controller. Select the Materials folder, do a right click, create new material. I'm gonna name this Feather Plane Material. On the inspector, select the shader drop down, click on it, and select Feather Plane Shader. Select the textures folder, and we're gonna drag and drop our plane pattern dot into our textures in the material. Click on plane color and we're going to change the alpha to 0. Now select the AR Feather Plane Fade Game object and then let's drag and drop our material into the Mesh Render material. Select the Prefabs folder and let's drag our AR Feather Plane Fade into there. We can delete the game object from our hierarchy. Next, we're going to open Google Chrome and we're going to go to assetstore.unity.com Inside the website, we're going to search for procedural fire. And we're going to find the asset down here. It's a free asset, so you just click on it. And then, since I already got it before, for me it appears open in Unity. For you, it's going to appear add to my assets. So you just click add to my assets. And then click open in Unity. I'm going to go to my package manager, click Windows package manager. And then, on the top left, where it says Packages, Unity, Registry, select My Assets. Look for Procedural Fire, click Import, and then click Import again. And now, you see that each of the students will do it, select Procedural Fire, click on Prefabs, and we're going to drag and drop back the Prefabs into our scene that we're going to be using. Now, select the Magic Fire Pro Red in the hierarchy, and then on the Inspector, click Add Component, and we're going to add an audio source. Inside the audio source in the inspector, search for spatial blend and then move the dot all the way to 3D. On the option where it says volume roll off, select linear roll off and then change the maximum distance to 5 and this will be approximately 5 meters. Now select the Magic Fire Pro Jello. On the inspector, click add component, search for audio source, change the spatial blend to 1 change the, the volume roll off to linear roll off and the max distance to 5. We're going to do the same for the orange and blue fire. Audio source. Volume roll off to linear roll off. Don't forget to change the max distance to 5. I forgot it, but I realized that after finishing the video. Now we're going to add an audio file to each object. So go to your rest folder. Select the Magic Fire Pro Jello in the hierarchy and then on the inspector look for audio source and we're gonna drag and drop our bird audio source. Click on the loop checkbox. We're gonna do the same for the red fire. Drag and drop the fire audio, click on the loop checkbox. Select the orange fire and then drag and drop the shell audio in the audio source and click on the loop checkbox. Finally, select the blue fire and we're gonna drag and drop our waterfall sound in the audio clip and then click on the loop checkbox. Select the Prefabs folder and then we're going to drag and drop to our fire game objects. We're going to create an original prefab. Once we finish creating the prefabs, we can select all the fires in the hierarchy and delete them. Select the AR Session Origin and drag and drop the AR Feather Plane Fade game object inside the AR Plane Manager Plane Prefab. Go to the scripts folder and create a new script. I'm gonna name this place object on plane and open the script. First, we're gonna add the packages that we need to use. I'm gonna start adding Unity Engine.xr.ar foundation and then using unity engine.xr.ar subsystems. Next, I'm going to add a required component type of AR Raycast Manager. I'm 
I'm going to declare a private variable AR plane manager name M underscore AR plane manager. Next, declare a private variable AR Raycast manager name M underscore Raycast manager. Now declare a static list AR Raycast hit name S underscore hits, which is going to be equal to new list AR Raycast hits. We're going to declare a private pool underscore planes found, and then we're going to declare a private int underscore object place index. Declare a public list type game object named visual elements. going to declare the awake method. Inside the awake method, I'm going to initialize my m underscore raycast manager. It's going to be equal get component ar raycast manager and the m underscore ar plane manager and it's going to be equal to get component ar plane manager. We're going to declare a private boy scan planes. And this method is going to allow us to detect if there are planes already scanned. And if they are, we're going to be able to instantiate an object. So we're going to declare an if statement. If m underscore ar plane manager dot trackables is greater than zero, it means that there are planes found. So we set our underscore planes found equal to true. I'm going to add a private void at place object. And then inside, I want to detect when the user touches the screen. So I'm going to do if input dot touchcon greater than zero. Now I want to get that touch. So I do touch touch equals input dot get touch zero. And then I want to check if touch face equals to touch face dot begin. I want to send the raycast. So I'm going to do if m underscore raycast manager dot raycast. I'm going to pass the touch dot position and then the s underscore hits and then the trackable type dot plane within polygon. Next, I'm going to declare my pose hit pose equals s hits index zero dot pose. And this gives us position and rotation in a 3D space. Add set visual element and pass the hit pose as an argument. I'm going to create a private void set visual element and I'm going to pass a pose hit pose as an argument. First, I want to check which object I have placed based on the index. So I'm going to do if underscore object place index is less than visual elements dot count. I'm going to do instantiate. I'm going to pass visual elements with the object underscore place index. And then I'm going to pass the position by doing hit pose dot position and then the hit pose dot rotation. So this is going to make appear or object in the plane. We're going to add an else and then hide planes because we want to disappear the planes once we place all the objects. And then we're going to add underscore object place index plus plus to increment the index of the object place. I am going to declare private void hide planes. I'm going to do for each bar plane in airplane manager dot trackables and then I'm going to do plane game object set active to false, and this is going to hide our planes. Go to the optic method, and we're going to add if not planes have been found, then we're going to do scan planes. Else, we're going to do place object. Finally, let's do some quick fixes. On require component, 
on the curly braces at the beginning, change that for a square braces. Go to the skin planes function and where it says m underscore airplane manager dot trackables at dot count. And that's all we need to do related to the script. Select the AR session origin and add the place object on plane script. And now on our visual elements, we're going to add four visual elements. Go to your prefabs folder and then we're going to add the different fires that we created as a prefab and we're going to drag and drop it into our visual elements. On the hierarchy inside the AR session origin, select the AR camera and now on the inspector, click add component and we're going to add an audio listener. Now go to file, build settings and if you're running on Android, you can select the device that you want to run the app. So in this case, I'm going to select my device and click on add open scene. Now you can click build and run. And I'm going to name this Android underscore bill and I'm going to save it. Now, once I open my app, you can see the app starts scanning the planes and I can walk around. And once I tap on the screen, it instantiates or fire with the sound image of it. And as far as you walk, you can hear the sound decreasing or increasing if you are getting close. So as you see, the sound has a volume roll off of approximately 5 meters radius. And this is it. Don't forget to like or subscribe. If you have any questions or feedback, just leave it in the comments. Thank you. See you next time.